So if you are like how I was in law school, you know third year is coming and you have to take the bar exam and you only want to have to do it one time. If you're also like me and you want to be in, a practice in multiple jurisdictions, you want to figure out how you can take just one bar exam and be admitted to multiple jurisdictions. There are a couple ways you can do it. I'm going to talk about two of them today in today's video. And you can see how you can work smarter, not harder. Let's talk about it. Okay, so before I get into what you came here for today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell so that you're the first to see content when we post every Sunday. All right, so now that I got that out of the way, I want to know, where are you guys planning on uh, practicing which jurisdiction? Personally, I went to school in D.C., and so I was practicing or planning to practice in that area, so I took the Maryland bar. Comment below and let me know where you plan on practicing, and is it the same area that you're going to law school, or is it a different area? I'm curious to know kind of how you made the plan when you thought about going to law school and where you were going to take the bar. So as I mentioned, I actually went to school in D.C., but I didn't take the D.C. bar. And I'll tell you one reason why I didn't do it, and that has to do with something called bar reciprocity. So what bar reciprocity means is when you're admitted to one bar jurisdiction, certain other states or other jurisdictions will allow you to wave into their jurisdiction without having to take the bar exam in their particular jurisdiction. So this is like great. It doesn't happen in all jurisdictions. Famously, New York and California are two jurisdictions that do not allow you to become part of their uh, bar unless you actually sit for the bar exam. Um, I know just as a side for those states, they do allow you once you've practiced for a certain amount of years to take a shorter bar exam, but they don't just let you get away with not taking any bar exam to be admitted to the bar for California or New York. So that's just an aside. So let's get back to why I didn't take the DC bar exam. Well, I took Maryland bar exam because you can actually wave into DC if you score high enough on the MBE, the multi-state bar exam. If you get a high enough score on the Maryland bar exam, you can wave into DC by paying the right amount of fees and submitting the paperwork, but you can actually get Maryland and DC. Conversely, if you took the DC bar exam, you cannot wave into Maryland. And so basically, it would be uh, behoove you to work smarter, not harder, if you really wanted to get both jurisdictions to take the Maryland bar exam and wave into DC. And I think just about every state, just about every state, you'll have to look to see, but just about every state, if you score high enough on the MBE portion of the bar exam and you pass the bar exam for that state, you can wave into DC. So anybody, I'm, I feel like the only people that may want to take the DC bar exam are those people that have no intentions of practicing anywhere else. That's why they would sit for the DC bar exam. But in my head, I'm like, why would I do that if I wanted to get two jurisdictions for the, not even for the price of one, but for the sitting of one exam. Um, I would take another state and then actually wave into DC. So I'm going to put on the screen um, a, a chart of bar reciprocity because, like I said, all states don't have this uh, kind of setup where they allow you to come be a part of their bar without actually having to sit for the bar exam. I feel like it's some kind of elitist thing where they want to put you through the ringer. It, I mean, def definitely states have different laws. Louisiana is good for having different laws that are just so particular to that particular jurisdiction. But in general, a lot of the, the rules are the same. And so you have to be careful about as far as which states you plan on practicing in and deciding whether it's worth it to take one and being able to wave into the other at a later time. So keep that in mind when you're planning out, hey, I want to sit for this bar exam and I also want to sit for another jurisdiction, but do I have to if I plan it correctly? Okay, so the second way that you can actually access multiple jurisdictions without having to take multiple bar exams is admission on motion. And so I mentioned at the beginning that I'm admitted to the Maryland bar. I sat for the Maryland bar when I graduated law school and I passed the bar exam and I got a high enough MBE score. 
So I've been practicing for a while now and certain states have a thing where you basically can apply after you have been practicing as a practicing attorney for a certain amount of years, you can apply to uh, be admitted to their jurisdiction on motion. And so usually the minimum I think is the practice for five years. And this is different from reciprocity because reciprocity, I don't believe you have to practice at any amount of time. You can basically pass one jurisdiction and apply right away. Whereas admission on motion, you actually have to practice as an attorney in the, an a jurisdiction for a certain amount of years and then apply to be admitted to their bar um, after practicing for whatever the requisite period of time. So personally, what I did, I was living in the Maryland, D.C. area, and then I actually relocated to Texas. And I wanted to be admitted to the Texas bar without having to take the Texas bar exam. So I applied for admission on motion and cited the fact that I've been practicing as an attorney for five years and they have a long application and it's like almost $1,000 to be admitted on motion because they're saying, hey, you didn't do the rigmarole like everybody else, you're gonna pay for this. But if you don't want to sit for the bar exam, it'll be worth it. And so I applied and got admitted to the Texas bar under admission on motion. And so now I have Maryland and Texas, and technically I could do DC if I wanted to. Um, I have no intention of practicing DC, so I figured I could save myself the money, but I can actually apply to those. So what that does is now puts me, I have admissions to the Maryland bar and admissions to the Texas bar. And as I mentioned before, all states are different. So not all states have reciprocity with other states. But now I basically increased my odds of being admitted to other jurisdictions on motion or through reciprocity because I have Texas. So Texas might have reciprocity with some of the states I may be interested in, or Maryland may have reciprocity with some of those states. Um, and I can apply based off of admission to both of these. The I guess the downside is now I have to maintain a uh, bar my bar uh, standards for both states, paying my fees and if there's any uh, continuing legal, legal education. The, the good thing is Maryland actually doesn't have any CLEs after do continuing legal education. Texas does. So I kind of got away with not doing CLEs for a while, but if I want to keep my Texas bar um, admission in good standing, I actually have to do certain CLE uh, hours a year to keep that in good standing. But it's a minimum price to pay. At least I don't have to do it for two different states. Um, I know people who have been admitted to Texas, excuse me, to New York and Virginia, which both have CLEs. And so they try to do CLEs for multiple jurisdictions, which can be a little overwhelming, especially if you wait to the last minute. Comment below. Let me know if that's something that you even knew about before. And if that's something that you were planning on doing after law school, I'm interested to see kind of where it takes people because it, it definitely gives you more options if you have uh, admissions to more than one jurisdiction as far as where you can go, where you can hang your shingle if you want it, if you want to work for another company, you can go. Uh, personally, I work for the federal government, and if you practice, let's say, immigration law, you just have to be admitted to a bar. It doesn't have to be a particular state. And so I work for the federal government, I just have to be admitted to a bar, no particular bar. So it depends on what you want to do um, after you graduate, whether it be worth it to actually say, I want to be admitted to multiple jurisdictions. If you plan on practicing in a, and only practicing federal law, it's not necessary. But if you want to have the freedom to practice in multiple states, I would say it's worth it to check in to see what the requirements are for uh, bar reciprocity with other jurisdictions or admission on motion. Let me know below and I hope to see you in the next video.